My name is uh, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Dr. Shehu, uh, PSC. Uh, to talk about uh, power, prisoners' rehabilitation and welfare action, we will have a very, very good rapport, good understanding, and good synergy between the police and uh, Prawa for many years. It is an institution that uh, concerns primarily on respect of dignity and human rights, which the police are supposed to be part of it. And also capacity building to the police to enable them to perform effectively and efficiently in conjunction with the fundamental respect to the fundamental human rights as enshrined into the Nigerian constitutions of 1999. It's very, very beneficial and at the same time, in building capacity and enabling the police officers to perform credibly when they go out to discharge their duties. The police is an organization that deals with all kinds of human beings. When they come across a police officer, they deserve to be respected by police in ensuring not only their security and safety, but also in respecting their dignity and human rights. So in a nutshell, the training and the training we are getting from the power is to enable us have police that will function and discharge their duties in a most standard and acceptable manner by members of the public. At this juncture, I want to say kudos. Welcome to the Nigeria Police Post Online Training. I uh, thank you again for signing on on this particular um, module, which is going to focus on language and citizens' contact. Uh, you will recall that in the first module, we dealt with issues that relate to the uniform that you wear during uh, foot and mobile patrols. We also dealt with issues relating to the vehicles and how the vehicles are being branded. So this particular module too that we're looking at now, we're going to move away from the issues relating to your dressing or the vehicle that you are using for this operation. But to look at the issue about language and citizens contact. Language and citizens contact. So uh, what is our lesson objective here? We want to ensure that you as the officers that have signed in, in on this particular uh, module uh, is able to understand the human rights issues that guide or that relates to the way you speak or communicate to citizens during operations, the language you use and during citizens' contact. Now, in terms of the expected outcomes, we want it to make be that after this course, you will have gained an increased knowledge in relation to the, these guidelines um, on how to communicate, the language you use, the issues relating to citizens' contact. But it's not just gaining that knowledge, as I keep saying, but that you would actually, there should be a change in terms of how you begin to implement this in the field. Before now, how do you communicate uh, to citizens? Before now, what, do you, what, what is the kind of way that you project yourself in terms of how you verbalize certain communication 
to them. So we want to be sure that after this course, there should be a difference. Uh, don't also forget the first impression is always important. So it is important for every police officer, and that's how I want to start my hair. It is important for every police officer to actually be very respectful and courteous. Do you know something? That you are courteous in addressing a citizen does not mean that you will not do what is the needful. Even if you are supposed to arrest that person, you will still arrest the person and still do your work. You will still do the right thing, but respectfully address this person. Cautiously address this person. It does not, it does not stop you from doing exactly all that you have planned to do with the person. So it's not in terms of your language, the harshness of the language that is important. Okay? So police officers should indeed use that and non-threatening language when conducting a sports inquiry. They must be able to be very, very tactful. Remember, the person you are seeing could be an of, an, an of a criminal, it could be an innocent person. What is important is that your intellect must be on, your language that you communicate must also be very, very cautious. And as I said, it does not stop you from doing what you need to do. The way you question the person, Police is also important. Police officers should use a conversational language. Why? Because it will make the person relax. So, but if you begin to make it look like you are interrogating, but you see, if the person is relaxed in that mood of being relaxed, you can get the kind of information that you need without the person knowing it. But when it becomes more like an interrogation type of question, the person begins to be almost uh, cautious about what they tell you or what not to tell you. Remember that this, a citizen's impression of a particular police officer has a big impact on how the entire Nigerian police force is perceived. So the action of one officer can mean a lot. So let's say I ask you this question, or maybe you, you are there, you are seeing somebody, and you say, hello, good morning, sir. I am, and you mention your rank and name. May I ask you for your name, please? May I also see your ID card, please? You can see, the person you are addressing like that, um, you know, will definitely respond also in a very positive way. Unless there's something wrong with that person. Don't also forget that how you act may determine how people respond to you. How you communicate, what you say first. Don't also forget it. So, police officers cannot force any person to present an ID card or any other document. However, you are allowed to ask for their names. You are allowed, you know to take further steps if you think that there is something suspicious. So, if you ask for an ID card and the person doesn't give it, the next question is, what am I supposed to do next? If you ask, don't say it, for example, give me your handbag, give me your wallet, and you are the one searching inside the wallet and inside the handbag for the ID card. You can't ask the person, open it, start taking it out. So the police should encourage the individual to voluntarily hand over the identification or any document. But again, remember the major point we have made here now is that the voice, the tone, the, the, the manner, the content of your communication must be what? Respectful, must be courteous. And I want to also add here, the, to be able, part of the, what you should actually uh, focus on is the, also the pitch of your voice. Because if you are shouting at the person, already you are bringing in certain tension. But if you are calm and quietly ask, please, can I have your ID card? Please, can you give me 
um, this document or that document. And as I had said, you need to really always be alert and make sure that you are utilizing, asking questions that you will utilize to make decision as to next action that you need to take. Now, when an individual asks for a reason or an explanation, why he or she was stopped for questioning, don't begin to shout at them. Don't begin to say, why are you why will you question me when you go to the station? You get don't do that. Just briefly explain that police patrols are usually normal. It's a normal procedure. And the reason why you do that is to make everybody feel safe. Okay? You want to be able to carry out your normal lawful constitutional duties. So, you want to be able to prevent crime. You want to be able to secure the general public. You may not even go into the city, but the most important thing here is to let people know this is normal. So, as you say, this is a normal procedure. The person then may relax. But that does not mean in that normal procedure, if you find something so suspicious, you don't trigger next level. So, I give you some examples. Uh, you know, patrols are part, okay, they say to you, eh, but officer, why did you stop me now? Why are you stopping me? They say, oh, uh, patrols, my dear brother or my dear sister, or uh, good morning, sir, good afternoon, sir. Uh, actually, patrols are part of our normal duties, you know, normal procedure for, for, for the police. And really, we are undertaking it to help prevent crime and also to make sure that the general public is safe, including yourself. And every other person okay um, always thank the citizens before letting the person go whatever even if you check there's nothing that you have seen or whatever oh please thank you very much for your time thank you very much have a safe trip you have not taken anything back to you so it's always important to do that as the old saying goes first impression lasts Police citizens' contact are not only one of the means by which your, you as a police officer will provide services to people. But the truth is that this will even color the impression this officer will have about police in general. But also it will affect what then follows. So, for example, when you engage in patrols or in checkpoints or you are doing investigation or there is you are dealing with issue of tra traffic or whatever it is always good to follow the guidelines that we are talking about the way you speak to people is important the way you speak to people is important always maintain courtesy as we said sir ma there's no problem always maintain eye contact it is very important. Don't forget that individuals often become very uncooperative when they think that, you know, you are being derogatory to them. Be polite. I said it and I'll keep saying it. Be polite. The other thing I want you to do, don't shout on the citizens. Don't shout. You know, because shouting does not mean anything. If the person is in front of you, and you just want to ask for the ID card or want to ask for any particular document, by shouting, it has not really get any problem. You have power already. Let me state it here. You already have power that is provided, you know, that covers the things that you are doing. So you don't need to. Maybe the best way to look at this is this. Do you know that your police uniform already is a symbol of authority and power? Without even saying anything. You know you wear that uniform and you just raise your hand and ask somebody if they to stop. They stop. That is power. Imagine, it doesn't matter how big or whatever huge you are. Imagine you are wearing something that is not a police uniform and you are on the real road, no police vehicle, and you are raising your hand. You'd be lucky if the person, you know, doesn't do something that would, all of us would regret. So the point I'm saying is that by shouting, it's not a way to demonstrate your power. It's not a way to demonstrate your authority. You already have it. And always use very clear, firm instruction to make the person understand first and then also to cooperate. If your instruction is confusing, okay, you're telling the person, give me, the, give me your ID card. At the same time, you're telling the person, open your boots. And the person doesn't know, which one should I do first? So let it be clear. And it can be sequenced. You can say, give me this. And then the person does that. And then 
you give the next instruction. But for each instruction, let it be very clear. Please, always exhibit professional behavior. Never use foul language. Never abuse anybody. Please. It is important. Also, don't also begin to touch your firearm in a way that makes the person feel threatened. And as I said, you are going to, unless you think that is a reason to suspect that if you don't do this, something will hit, it will attack you. You must always get a situation where the citizens feel calm about you. They, and then, as I had said earlier, when they feel calm, they will be able to volunteer a lot of information. During citizens' contact, all officers, you must exhibit professionalism. You must be courteous. You must respect every human rights principle that is applicable to the circumstances that you are. Please, that is important. Again, what have I said here? I have talked about the manner of your speech. That's all I'm saying. And the key point I'm making is that that you are polite in addressing somebody does not mean that you will not follow the due process. You will not do all that you want to do. Please, I, I think that if we can get this right as officers, it, a lot of things will be solved out there in the public. It will encourage collaboration. It will make the general public be able to trust the police more. It will make them to be able to provide key information uh, 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 to the police that will enable them to be more efficient in the work you're doing. So please, I want you after this training that when you go out now, let your language change. I want to be hearing things like you ask a question and you put sir, you put ma, and when you have finished with them, you say thank you. Let's see a new face of policing from you, following from what you are picking in this training. Thank you again for signing on.